it is such a beautiful autumn day here in Pennsylvania. The breeze is blowing, leaves are going all over the place, gray skies, colorful trees. And then I have to talk about the stupidity of humanity uh, because so many of you reached out to me and everybody wants to know what my opinion is between this conflict between Hamas and Israel. So uh, before I start this, I'm going to say quite candidly here, I'm impartial. Uh, I do not support either side. I do not support Israel. I do not support Palestine. I do not support Hamas. I do not support any organization over there in the Middle East. I'm a conservative Catholic Christian who resides in the United States, and I do not partake in overseas battles, especially a, a circular conflict that has been going on since and before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ himself. Even in the time of Jesus, there were Sadducees, there were um, Pharisees, and, and, and um, there was just so many different kinds of Jewish sects that, that just, you know, didn't get along with one another. This has been going on for a long time. There was even a scenes, okay, that, that was the other one that I couldn't name, and I just got them now, the ones who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. So they had, you know, they were apocalypticists like Christ was, but not quite. So this has been going on for a long time. Here's the problem that I have, though. It's, 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 it's the hypocrisy of this all. So depending on who you talk to and which side of the conflict you're on, you're the terrorist. And right now, as it stands, it seems to be Israel because the newspapers, the televisions, YouTube are all full of showing these god-awful images of these Palestinians being forced to leave their homelands because the Jews are trying to attempt to blow them back into the Stone Age. After all, I mean, you know, Israel is not recognized by any of the Arab states over there, not by none of their neighbors. and. They refuse to recognize Israel as a nation, and they want them off the map. People like Hezbollah, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, the PLO. Remember the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization? Well, they're still in power. You might want to check them out. They have a lot to say about this, too. They've been there for a long time. But anyways, so these politicians go around. We'll start with Democrats first. I'll get to the Republicans, but we're going to start with Democrats first. And the Democrats are all about having all these refugees come into our country now, especially right now, they want to make themselves look like that they have accrued the uh, helmet of humanity and we need to care about everybody and bring these people back into our country because after all, we got room for them. Look at all these big, beautiful houses and parks here. We can have that Palestinian sleeping out all over the place here. You, we want them here, but we don't want them here. We want them here, but we don't want them in our town. We want them here, but we don't want them in our city. We want them here, but we don't want them in our countries and the states. We want them here, but we don't want them sleeping in our schools. So where are we supposed to put them? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just bring them over here right? We have to be good, humane people. We have to look out for our fellow man and woman. Bring them here. Now, if this wasn't going on and we were going to talk about Jews and we were going to talk about Palestinians, well, then the, 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 the Democrats will look at it and say, anything that you say against Jews is anti-Semitic. But no, this isn't. This is different because the Jews right now have taken the initiative and they're starting to really fight back and you can't do that in a democratic society, of course, in them. Then there's the, there's the right side. Here comes the conservatives now. They're putting on the, the armor of God and they're saying, you know, we stand with Israel no matter what. We, we believe in blowing up Palestinian villages and strongholds wherever they may be. And if that includes killing women and children, so be it. And that's just it, right? I mean, look, after all, war is war, right? It doesn't matter. Innocent people are getting killed on both sides. The problem is we don't care about that. That's the problem. The problem is we look at this as a Palestinian conflict. We look at this as an Israeli conflict. And that's all it is. Look at YouTube. They are broadcasting this war 24-7. Do you think they're doing that because they're worried about how many Palestinians or Jews are getting killed? No, they're doing it because whatever channel is up here that's broadcasting this 24-7, they're doing it for ratings. Because if they don't have ratings, they go off the air. If they don't have ratings, they don't make no money. It has nothing to do with being an humanitarian. It has everything to do with being a shrewd business person. YouTube is like a used car lot anymore, man. I swear to God, every time I'm on here, I see all these people out there just posting all this bullshit without even comprehending or even possessing a basic understanding of what's going on over there. Why is it so hard to figure out what's going on? Why can't you just listen to reason? Why do we always have to pray for peace all the time? You go to church, you go to mass this morning, they told me pray for Israel. When the Ukraine and Russia war was still, well, it's still going on, you know, I, I was told by my Catholic priest, pray for the Ukraine. What about Russia? Russia, there was Russian people that were innocent people getting killed too. Why can't we pray for the Russians? And I thought about that for a moment because there's a lot of Russian people here in Beaver County and there's lots of them. There's Russian Orthodox and there's Russian Catholics too. Yes, the Russians do have a Catholic church. But you know what I got? One morning when I went to Mass, I got this. Here, look. This is what I got. See the colors? Blue and yellow. Ukraine. Ukrainian rosary. Pray for Ukraine. I wonder if they're going to have a blue and white rosary for Israel. 
Get you got to jump on that back one. So you see where I'm going with this. None of this makes any sense because it isn't about what's best for both sides. It's about what's best for the person who's going to take an interest in this. That's going to have an incentive. So here's 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 something that I think we need to focus on here. First of all, at least according to what I'm about to read to you from the Bible here, the Jews are not God's chosen people. At least by not Paul's writings. Listen what Paul says here in Romans chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. But it is, I don't know what English Bible you read. read you know, if you were a real Christian, you'd read the Greek. But, but it is not that the word of God has failed. For not all who are of Israel are Israel, nor are they the children of Abraham, because they are his descendants. But it is through Isaac that which descendants shall bear your name. This means, now listen carefully here, this means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. Wow, how about that? Does that sound like that the Jews are God's chosen people? I'm not saying they're not, but I'm saying that Paul doesn't think so, but we do. So I think we need to throw that baby out with the bathwater. I'm not so sure that's a clever argument. And this is a very overlooked passage in New Testament study of the understanding of what God's chosen people actually are. That's what it really comes down to. I don't even think a lot of Jews think of that themselves. Most of the Jews that live in Israel aren't even that religious. They just recognize themselves as Jews by race, not by religion. So again, depending on which side you are on, um, it's not quite clear where everybody should be going with this. Because no matter what side you're on, you're going to be looked at as a person who is on the wrong side. Look at here in America. We have an organization called Black Lives Matter. Now, I know I'm, I'm going to take a lot of heat for this, but I, 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 I would profess that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. They even came out on their website. And go read it for yourself. It's on their website that they support Hamas. They, want, they are calling for the destruction of Israel. How, how is that a humanitarian organization if they're calling for the destruction of a race of people. How is that justified? Any liberals out there, can they tell me? Any conservatives out there, can you answer that question? How, that just, how is that justified? It's on your website. Go look for it. Yourself. You can read it yourself. They've come out and flat out said that they support Hamas. Look what they've done. They've decimated our cities. They've raised businesses to the ground. And their reward was getting a Nobel Peace Prize. They were given a Nobel Peace Prize. The PLO was too. Palestine Liberation Organization, they got a Peace Prize. Be careful who you vote for. Be careful what you say. Be careful who you think you support. Because it ain't all peaches and cream. It actually runs much deeper. And the more you investigate, the more you find out for yourself, and the less you pay attention to politicians and news outlets and medias, you'll discover these things for yourself, and you'll become smart, just like the person who's making this video. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I'm just trying to show you, this is, this is how so easily things are misunderstood, and you think you're on the right side, and you're really not because it's a lot more complicated than that, okay? It just is. And I just don't understand why it is so hard for people to arrive at a, at a feasible conclusion that, you know, it, 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 it is what it is, and you can't, you know, just take anything out of that any more than what you're making sense of it. It just, there's just no way to, you know, come out and say, oh, yeah, this is the right way, or no, this is the wrong way, you know. Just like the Civil War, you know, the Civil War soldiers, the average Civil War soldier, this is shocking to you guys, and I think I said this in another video, the average Civil War soldier didn't give a damn about the slaves. They weren't fighting for slavery. They weren't fighting to eradicate slavery. They weren't. Any more than the IRA was fighting to eradicate British rule. Boo, that's a big one right there. Because you had the UDF in there killing Catholics, and you had the IRA killing Protestants, right? Irish Protestants, Irish Catholics. Same group of people ethnically, but religiously it was a little bit different. Even though they swayed to this day that the Troubles was not a, a, a religion, it was not a conflict over religion. Well, okay, whatever you say, but um, you know, I'm just trying to show you that uh, uh, there's, there's something here that I think that needs to be said about these Christian evangelicals who go around uh, telling everybody that the world is coming to an end because every time there's a conflict in Israel, they want to preach that the end times is near. Every single time, eschatology is always brought into us. Every time Israel has a crisis with somebody over there that's trying to threaten their existence. So I'm going to read you something here that comes from the second book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 18. 
We ourselves heard this voice from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possessed a prophetic message that this is always together reliable. You will do well to pay attentive to it as a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. This is the American Standard Version. It's a terrible English translation. Knowing this, first of all, there is no prophecy of Scripture that is a matter of personal interpretation. I'm going to read that again. Know this, first of all, there is no prophecy of Scripture that is a matter of personal interpretation. No prophecy ever came through human will, but rather beings moved by the Holy Spirit spoke under the influence of God. So for you quacks out there on YouTube that are talking about the end times, I think you should not quit your day job just yet. So tomorrow I'm just going to make up a bag of popcorn and I'm going to watch your videos and laugh. So much for eschatology. It's 100% failure rate. Okay, guys, I've talked long enough. I'm getting out of here. That's my view on all this. It's a circular conflict and it's not going to end and I do not support either side. I hope this kind of explains things for you and you look at it from a different perspective. A human